Hello everyone and welcome to my webinar on how to improve accuracy in your drone surveys. My name is Neve Craven and I am part of the surveying and construction team here at Copters, working with over 75% of the survey association and the biggest names in construction. Now the reason for holding today's webinar is because the most frequent question I am asked being in the drone surveying business is why is the accuracy not good enough with drones? The problem here isn't that the drone isn't accurate enough, but perhaps the survey isn't being executed with the best practices to get that accuracy down. So in the next half an hour, we're going to cover the best tips for survey grade accuracy, how to reduce survey downtime by 50%, the biggest mistakes as a drone surveyor to avoid, and the best hardware options because hardware is crucial to the outcome of your survey results. These tips are purely for photogrammetric drone surveys and we can cover LiDAR in another session as the two methods are completely different. So let's begin with tip number one, know your ground sampling distance. Before you begin flying, know what ground sampling distance you're going to require for the survey. If you haven't come across ground sampling distance before, it's the distance between two pixel centres on the ground and it is essential for ensuring accuracy and detail in your surveys. Knowing the ground sampling distance will give you the balance in detail and efficiency as it will give you the middle ground between flying high which will ensure efficiency but may lead to blurry images and flying low which will give you crisp images but will be time consuming. Each drone has a unique optimal flying height to obtain a good ground sampling distance. So this will not be the same for each drone you use. For example, you can fly the Matrice 350 RTK with P1 camera at twice the height of the Mavic 3 Enterprise whilst maintaining the same ground sampling distance. This is because the P1 has a higher quality camera with 45 megapixels than that on the Mavic 3 Enterprise, which is 20 megapixels. So you can maintain that accuracy even while flying at a higher altitude. This is then equally true for the Phase 1 P3 camera, which has a 100 megapixel camera. So again, can be flown higher while still gathering high quality data. You can also adjust the ground sampling distance on a project by project basis to meet the specific needs of your project. And in some cases, the project might require a large area covering quickly with less detail in the survey. While in other cases, detail may be key and speed not so much. Now, there are pros and cons to both a lower ground sampling distance and a higher ground sampling distance. And as I mentioned, the way you calculate the optimal ground sampling distance will be project and hardware dependent. Having a lower ground sampling distance means you will have higher accuracy and more data captured, but you will have to fly at a lower altitude so you will have a longer flight time. If you fly at a higher ground sampling distance, you'll be flying higher, so have a shorter flight time, increasing that efficiency, but will have lower accuracy and less data captured. So to plan the right ground sampling distance, you will need to figure out the optimal balance between collecting data fast and maintaining that accuracy based on the needs of the project and what kit you are using. So how do you work out ground sampling distance? Ground sampling distance is the image width times focal length, then divided by the sensor width times flight altitude. This may seem tricky, but there are plenty of calculators online which will work this out for you and completely eliminate that worry in your mind that you figured it out wrong. So that brings us to our next tip, image overlap. Image overlap is the amount of common area which is shared between consecutive images taken when conducting an aerial survey. The image overlap is measured as both front overlap, which is along the flight direction, and as side overlap, which is between parallel flight tracks. 
the higher the overlap of images is the increase of accuracy because there are enough common features in the images to make sure that they are accurately stitched together in that post-processing. It also increases detail as it makes sure that you don't miss any areas which will prevent you from having to go back to site to recapture data but also give you multiple, multiple perspectives again increasing the accuracy of those 3D models. Higher image overlap will also give more flexibility, especially in challenging and complex terrains, as it will provide more data for feature identification. The minimum overlap for a drone survey is 75% overlap in the front and 60% overlap on the side. But depending on the project, this again will need to be adjusted. So when you're dealing with large vertical objects, such as buildings, or if you're doing interior modeling, then you're gonna need to fly, then you're gonna need very high image overlap at around 90%, and also fly closer to have that smaller ground sampling distance. And again, you're gonna need an increased image overlap in cases such as snow, sand, and water, because identifying features will be few and far between. This is similar with mapping flat terrain and field, again, because identifying features will be low and you will need an image overlap of around 80%. And then with railways and roads, you will need at least 85% front overlap and at least two flight lines to capture linear features adequately. In these cases, hardware will also play an important part as a high resolution camera will be necessary. Just as you would figure out the ground sampling distance before any survey, you should also figure out the right overlap too, considering factors such as dense vegetation, complex structures, flight height, and higher resolution models. The next tip is to use RTK or real-time kinematic. RTK massively increases a drone's location from 2 to 5 metres without RTK to 1 to 3 centimetres width by correcting the errors in satellite signals. This is of course essential for surveying purposes as the slightest errors can lead to problems and inaccurate data. RTK works by using fixed base station to broadcast corrections and brings horizontal accuracy down to within one to three centimetres. This then reduces downtime by up to 50% because no corrections are needed to be made in post-processing. So premium positioning can access over 2,000 base stations globally. There are many benefits to using RTK for your drone surveys, and this is not just to improve accuracy. The accurate UAV positioning is crucial for crash prevention in crowded airspace and you will be able to identify other, reason, other reasons for inaccuracies because you will be able to look back with exact timestamps locations. As I mentioned earlier, you will also save time in post-processing as the reduction in errors is made in real time and you will also save time in setup as there will be a reduced need for ground control points. I do, however, recommend still putting out a few for checks in that post processing stage, because then if something does go wrong, you've got that extra check there. How effective RTK is at improving accuracy will depend on the network that you're using and its quality, coverage and reliability. This is why we work with premium positioning as they have access globally to over 2,000 base stations, meaning that we and many of our customers have never been let down. There are a couple of options with premium positioning for licensing. Limited, which gives you 40 hours of RTK access a month, and unlimited, which is it's what it says on the tin, it's unlimited. The right plan will depend on how often you fly and the need for accuracy provided by RTK. If you want to try out RTK, drop me a message after this webinar and we will set you up on a two week free trial to give you a try at using it. Now, 
There are only so many tips on improving accuracies within drone surveys. But if you do not have the right hardware, then none of this is going to matter. When looking at what hardware is going to be right for your project and the accuracy you need, you will need to consider cameras and sensors, battery life and flight planning ability. In terms of cameras and sensor size, the minimum you're going to need for survey grade accuracy is 4K video and 20 megapixels. If you're wanting that higher quality, then you're going to need a drone that has a higher resolution of around 40 megapixels. And in some cases, when you need sub-centimeter accuracy, you will need to go even higher, such as the Phase 1 P3 camera with 100 megapixels. The main reason most of you will have opted for drone technology for your surveys is for that efficiency because you can save around 75% of time on site with drones. So when choosing hardware, it's important to make the most out of this and find a drone that has a good battery life. Avoiding frequent battery swaps on large sites is crucial for maintaining that efficiency. So aim for at least 30 minutes of flight time per battery or battery set. To also increase efficiency, opt for a solution that has automated flight planning functions. You can upload pre-planned flight paths to the drone ahead of the start of a project. So then when you go to site, all you need to do is click go. Simple as that. The drone will do it for you. These kind of functions is what every drone surveyor should be looking out for when they explore the idea of introducing drone technology into their surveys, whilst wanting to increase that efficiency but not compromise accuracy compared to traditional methods. So based on this, I have included a few different solutions and how each may be the most beneficial for your particular projects. Starting with the DJI Mavic 3 Enterprise, the Mavic 3 Enterprise is the best entry-level surveying drone. It's ideal for those who need a portable, easy-to-deploy, survey-grade solution. Its key features are a 20-megapixel ultra-wide-angle camera and a 56 times hybrid zoom camera, a mechanical shutter which reduces image blur, and 45 minutes of flight time down to 42 when using RTK. Now the portability of the Mavic 3 Enterprise is the biggest advantage as it can easily fit in a backpack and be deployed on site. As it can be RTK enabled, this makes it a budget friendly survey drone, but it isn't IP rated, so it doesn't perform well in harsh, wet weather conditions. This is the best drone for those that are starting out using drones and have a smaller budget. So next we have the DJI Zen Mude P1, which can be attached to the DJI Matrice 350 RTK or the Matrice 300 RTK. The combination of P1 and 350 is one of the most powerful on the market for survey applications, especially those that require that high accuracy. The main features of the P1 are a 45 megapixel full frame, low noise, high sensitivity sensor, which is capable of taking a photo every 0.7 seconds. It isn't as portable as the Mavic 3 Enterprise, but the higher resolution and larger pixels provide superior image quality and dynamic range. The P1 is also IP rated IP4X, and the drone is IP55 rated, making it suitable for them harsher weather conditions. The main advantage is its ability to collect mass data quickly, with the M350 and P1 being able to be flown at 50% higher altitudes than the Mavic 3 Enterprise, whilst maintaining that same ground sampling distance. Next is the Phase 1 P3 IXM 100 megapixel, which can be attached to the Matrice 350 RTK like the P1. And it is the best camera on the market for capturing them details and gaining sub-centimeter accuracy. The P3 camera is crucial for all of your business. 
It's crucial if your business success depends on capturing sub-millimetre details of complex structures from a safe distance, consistently capturing sharp images in challenging, high contrast environments, and capturing entire assets in sub-millimetre details with a minimum of images. The P1 had, the P3, sorry, has unmatched productivity, capturing the smallest of details in the largest of areas from the furthest distance. Its 100 megapixel sensor ensures the largest coverage, highest dynamic range and smallest ground sampling distance in the market. This means again you can do that mass data collection in a short space of time without compromising on accuracy. Now in my last webinar I directly compared the DJI Mavic 3 Enterprise and the DJI Zenmuse P1 camera. So if you're wanting to see the differences between them, reach out and I will send across a link to that one. But here I would like to compare the Zenmuse P1 and the Phase 1 P3. So first you need less flight lines and less images with the P3 compared to the P1 as it captures more with each image, make more than halving the number of images that you're going to need with the P3 compared with the P1. Now this is a tongue twister. <laughs> this also means that you only need to fly almost a quarter of the time with the P3 as you do with the P1, reducing the number of flights, time on the mission and batteries for the project. The Phase 1 P3 is the best on the market for surveying purposes, but it's only needed when your project requires that extra accuracy and time saving element. So before we finish, I want to tell you about a couple of deals that we are running. The first is our survey starter bundle. This includes a Mavic 3 Enterprise with a 50% off GVC, which is the drone pilot license, and three months free RTK to give you a chance to try out RTK for your drone surveys. This is the perfect entry level setup for drone surveys. The second deal is one for the Phase 1 P3 camera. With any P3 purchase, we provide a 90 minute workshop with the pilots that are gonna be using the camera to ensure that they are getting the very best out of the equipment and hold their hand every step of the way because we know it can be tricky to get that accuracy and use the drone and payload to the best of its ability. So thank you all for joining today's webinar and your time and participation. I hope that these tips and run through of the hardware have been helpful and you begin to see that accuracy improve within your own drone surveys. If you do have any further questions or need any personalised advice, feel free to reach out to myself or anyone else in the Copters team. Have a great rest of the day.